Hey, what's happening, gamers? Welcome to the Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright Trilogy for Nintendo Switch. Woohoo! Special thanks to our friends over at Capcom for providing and sponsoring this video series. And we are excited Yay. to look at the original DS games now available on the Nintendo Switch. Oh, yeah. So we're going to be starting at the very beginning with Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Like, comment, subscribe, and tell us your favorite Capcom game in the comments section below. Objection! Yeah. Why would it be an objection? Uh, Episode oh. one, the first turnabout. <laughs> I don't know. I was just trying to say something Phoenix Wright Wrighty. Hold it! Let's begin. There we go. It's supposed to be gasp, gasp, but... And we'll be providing the uh, voices for this. Yeah. Blast it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. I I've got to find someone to pin this on. Hmm... Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. Evil. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, August 3rd, 947, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Lobby Number 2. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh. Uh, hi. Oh, wait, that's, that's you. Hiya, Chief. Uh -huh. Woo, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your clients as well. Um, thanks. Uh, actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Uh, actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I, I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life! Everything! It's all over! Hmm? Is that your client screaming over there, Ace? Ah, uh, yep, that's him. Death, despair, oh, oh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. Hmm, it sounds like he wants to die. Um, uh, yeah. Uh. Nick! <laughs> hey, hey there, Larry. Hey, buddy. Dude, I am so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? What is wrong with you, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I... I'm finished! Finished! I can't live in a world without her. I just can't. Oh. Who, who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm, the person responsible for your girlfriend's death. Uh, that newspaper... Say, it was you. But no, it... It definitely wasn't him. It definitely wasn't him! My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. More, uh, ooze. A young woman was murdered in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when someone smells, it's usually the Butts. Oh my gosh. In the 23 years I've known him, he's usually been true. Uh, he has a knack of getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. Then I owe him one, which is why I took the case, to clear his name. And that's just what I'm gonna do. And this is a reading game, if you guys didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. August 3rd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Numero two. Oh, boy. I have to do the judge. Court is now in session <laughs> for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. Oh, my gosh. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. There's so many men in this courtroom. I'm sorry. <sighs> the uh, defense is ready, Your Honor. 
Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Uh, y y yes, Your Honor. I'm, uh, a little nervous. <laughs> your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge for your client's sake. I hope you can control your nerves. Thank you, Your Honor. Hmm. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Huh? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Oh, hands shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Oh, Larry Butts. Larry. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. <laughs> Why is he asking you stupid questions? It's a video game. Oh. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Okay. Next question. <clears throat> this is a murder trial. Tell me, what was the victim's name? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. We did? Uh, it's wait. Oh, uh oh. Is gr Larry's. No, no way. I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure that you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Uh, oh, the victim, of course. I, <laughs> I know the victim's name. I um, just forgot temporarily. I think I feel migraine coming on. Look. The victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press the R button to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you, Phoenix. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Court record. Okay, so... Cindy! Cindy. Cindy's... Oh, Cindy. Oh. Cindy! Cindy, the last one. Not Cinderblock, Cindy. Oh, the other one was Cinderblock? It yes. just says Cindy. Look, no, no, no. The other name. Oh, Cindy. it's C Cinderblock. Oh, Cindy. you are like a Cinderblock. Uh, <laughs> Cindy Stone. <laughs> uh, um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. You're perfect for this role. Correct. <laughs> now, uh, tell me what was the cause of death. She died because she was hit with a blunt object. Strangled. Hit with a blunt object. Poison. We'll go with hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. <laughs> uh, th 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 thank you, Your Honor, because I don't feel relaxed. That's for sure. <laughs> well, then. First... A question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne. So the prosecution's name is Mr. Payne. Yeah, he <laughs> I didn't know that. Pain. Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. All I know is pain. What did you uh, explain to the court just what the object was? The murder weapon was this statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Statue added to the court record. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition that you have in court. Use the R button to check the court record frequently. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant Mr. Butts to the stand. Um, Chief, what, what do I do now? Pay attention, Phoenix. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh, Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Yes, it could. Him. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! We were great together! We were like Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony! Oh, didn't they all die? <laughs> yeah. I wasn't dumped, she just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me ever. 
What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumb. <laughs> oh my god. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What? What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it lies! I don't believe a word of it! Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. It doesn't mean she was there with somebody else. Passport added to the court record. She could have been there on her own. Hmm. Indeed, Amber. She appears to have returned the day before her death. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. <gasps> daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! Oh my god! We can clearly see what kind of woman this uh, Miss Stone was. Hey, don't talk about her that way! Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... Stop him from answering. Don't answer the question. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Oh, wince. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? A cheating she-dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. <laughs> wow. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. <clears throat> you went to the victim's apartment the day of the murder, did you not? Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, uh, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. <laughs> oh, uh -oh, yeah, he, he went. went. <laughs> what do I do? Um, a answer honestly. I would. have him answer honestly. I know. I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was there. I went. <laughs> okay, maybe we should have prevented him from answering. Order! Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill! Uh, she wasn't home, man. She, like, I didn't see her. Your Honor, the defendant is lying! Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, uh, that simplifies matters. Uh, who is your witness? <laughs> the man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime? Oh, wait, sorry. It was the, it yeah, was, it was the other guy. Again. Ah, he saw it all! Mummer, mummer, mummer. Mumble, mumble, mumble. Order! Order of the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. I feel weird. In the anime, she wasn't, like, going out with other guys, though. I know. This is bad! On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspaper at the victim's building. Yes, yeah, so if you guys didn't know, there's a Phoenix Wright uh, anime. Maybe he lied about her going out with other guys to make this guy sweat. Possibly. Please bring me Mr. Frank uh, Schwitt to the stand. Oh. Why does he have, like, a dot in his forehead, though? I don't know. Just something to do. Mr. Uh, newspaper Man, you sell newspapers, is this correct? Oh, yes, 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 newspapers, yes! Uh, Mr. Swit, uh, you may proceed with your testimony. I have to call him Mr. Sowit. I don't Sowit? know. okay. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. They don't really say the names in the anime very much. No. It was just, uh... They call them defendant and stuff. Yep, yep, yep. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead! I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately, 
However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant, sitting right over there. Hmm... Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that! I know. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone at the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. <laughs> You're having fun. Um, if you want me to do any of the guy voices, I will. I'm worried about your throat getting like, oh, destroyed. Oh, I'm, I'm fine. As okay. long as I don't have to do Vegeta, I'm good. Uh -huh. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor. I have found a record of the blackout for your pers personnel. Pers I don't know. Pursual? Pursual, I don't know. I don't know. Blackout record. Okay. Now, Mr. Wright. Uh, yes, uh, Your Honor? You may begin your cross-examination. My favorite voice you do is Phoenix, so... Thank you. Yeah. Cross-examination, Your Honor? All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why? You exposed the lies in the testimony of the witness that he just gave. Lies? What? He, he was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? Ooh. Huh. How do I prove he's not? You hold the key, right? It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there somewhere. First, Find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face! Um, okay. Open the court record with the R button, then point out contradictions in the testimony. Okay, here we go. You've got this right. Cross-examination. Oh, yeah! It's on! It's on, dude! Yes! You're going down, Swit! I was going door-to-door -door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing the apartment. Uh... I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door halfway open uh, behind him. Half open, you say? Yes, yes. The door was open halfway, yes. I watched for a moment, but no one came to close the door. That's odd. In a big city like this, I thought. I see, and what happened next? Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. Um, I don't know. Yeah. The phone in her apartment wasn't working. Yes, I, I mean, no, no, it, it wasn't, right? But you said you didn't go into the apartment, or did you? Oh, that, I, I can't explain that. Ow. There are, uh, was the cordless phone on the uh, shelf in the entranceway. I reached inside and tried using that to call. And that phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Are you certain? Yes, uh, absolutely. Hmm, he seems really confident. We have 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Right! Doesn't that seem strange to you? Present some evidence to contradict him! Yes! The autopsy is a different, uh, time! You're right. Alright, so... Cindy's... It won't let me click it, though. Mm -hmm. Oh. There we go! You found the body at 1 p.m. You're sure? Yes! It was 1 p.m. for certain! Frankly, I find that hard to believe. 
Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. Oh, yeah! The autopsy notes the time of the death is sometime after 4 p.m. Whoa. There was nobody to, er, nobody to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Ah! He's sweating. Yep. Oh, th that! Oh, er, um... Good job, Luke. You're making him sweat. This is trivial. The witness merely got, uh, forgot the time. Mm, I don't think so. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. He said he was sure. Mr. Sewitt, exactly. Why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, I, are, um, well, I, gee, that's a really good question. <laughs> Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out the contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Cool. Wait, I, I remember now. So Would exciting. you care to give the your testimony again? Witness testimony. He's gonna change his testimony now? Yep. This is so unfair. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. But it was three hours off, wasn't it? I, I guess the victim must have been watching a video or taped program or something. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm. I don't think so. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. That's right. Right. I forgot how fun this game is. All right. So he said he heard the TV, but there was a blackout, so he couldn't have possibly exactly. heard the TV. When you uh, found the time, of, uh, there was a voice. Um, yeah. It's hold it. Hold it. Are you sure it was a television, not a radio? Well, I no, I guess it might have been a radio. Incidentally, there was no radio on the premises. There was only one large television. Right! I can't put my finger on it, but something about this seems fishy. Something about hearing the television. The witness has testified. We heard the time. It was, uh... Where is the blackout report? Objection! Hold it right there! The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. Ugh. Yeah! You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Ah! I... Well... Irk. Irk. <laughs> oh, the defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sewitt? No, he doesn't. No, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Yeah, yes. You heard voices that were... Ah! Wait! I remember now. Mr. Sewitt? The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. Hmm. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. Yeah, they are. That. And you seem rather distraught. Ah! My apologies, Your Honor. <laughs> it uh, must have been a shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sweet. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. I like your judge person. Thank you. Kind of reminds me of, a, like, a Santa. Yeah. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yes. Uh, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. Wait. You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. Hmm. The defense may cross-examine the witness. I... Gladly. I thought that clock only says the time. I didn't know it shows the time, too. Uh... Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. That strikes me as a very suspicious mistake. Yes, I can see how you'd be a little doubtful. I'm really sorry. I only just remembered that uh, table clock. A table clock? There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yes, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. Why didn't you tell us that in the first place? I 
guess it just slipped my mind. Uh -huh. I'm not really sure how it happened myself. The witness says he saw the table clock. End of story. Now, find the contradiction right. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. I guess we'll just keep going. I don't know. Oh, wait, there is a... Objection! This evidence clearly reveals the contradiction in that statement, Your Honor. How exactly are you... Uh, that evidence statement... Uh, just... What? <laughs> they, uh, they aren't, are they? No, not at all. Mr. Wright, please think of the facts before making accusations. Oops, we Oops. got one down. I don't think, uh, won me any points with the judge. Oops. Oops. Alright, we'll keep going. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? A table clock? Was there a table clock at the scene? This is the first I've heard of it. Okay, the judge is back on her side. Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. Okay. Uh, How would he know that, though? That's what we're gonna ask him. The murder weapon? Yes, the table clock that we used as a weapon. That's what I just said. Did you doze off in the middle of the testimony or something? <laughs> Something's fishy here. Hmm. I don't know. I mean... It's statue. statue. It has to I... be that clock. Yeah, I just don't know when we're supposed to use it. Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock? It was a statue! Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? Ah! You, with your objections and your evidence, just what do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sewit. Hey, I, I saw it in there, okay? That's a clock! Uh, Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne? As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. Uh, the neck is a switch. You must tilt it, and it says the time out loud. Also, it doesn't look like a clock. I submitted it as a statue. My, my apologies. Oh, I see. It's true. The judge is so forgiving. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Yes, we do, because yes. how would he know? Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hands. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Yeah! Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. Good job. The witness knew it was a clock because he... Went, went into, into the, the apartment! apartment! Sorry. You're lying! You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder! Oh yeah? Prove it! Prove I went in there! I'll do better than that! I can prove you were the one who killed her! You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard! Order of the court! Intriguing! Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sewitt, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned in your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Uh, what? What is the meaning of this? Ah, uh, this is baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. Yeah. <laughs> Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... that... that day... I... I never... Look! I... the clock... I, no! I mean, I saw... Yeah! Ouch! Whoa, you got a toupee in the face. Stupid! Shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you! It was him, I tell you, I saw him! He killed her! And he should burn! Give him death! Wow, this is hardcore. I know. Order! Order in the court, I say! Your Honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright! Your Honor, 
You claim the sound the witness heard come from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think it thoroughly, carefully. Your, your Honor, the sound Mr. Sweat heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Try sounding the clock? Try sounding the clock. Let's do that. Ask the neighbors. Let's sound the clock now here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? Ask the court to listen very carefully. Oh, I asked the court. Okay. Beep. I think it's 825. Certainly it's a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker after all. <laughs> so, uh, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? Uh, it is 1125. Ah! It's three hours off. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Very good, Amber. Precisely the discrepancy between Mr. Sewit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sewit, try to talk your way out of this one. Ah! <laughs> You forgot one thing! Oh, what's he talking about now? While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing! How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case! Ah, uh, he's right. How am I gonna prove that? Darn it! I'm so close. Mr. Wright! It seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Well, yes, your honor. This means I cannot let the uh, incident indict the witness. Unfortunately. Uh-oh. This ends a cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sewett. Oh, oh my gosh. I came all the way down here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal. You lawyers are all slime. Ugh, I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. What? There's nothing I can do about it now. Oops. Did we just lose? Not so fast, Mr. Sewitt. What? Mia? Uh, I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But, Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking outside the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason, and you'll have your proof. Right, right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Yes. She was traveling. But that's Wait! Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it right. Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove the claim beyond a doubt. Ah! Tough words! Let's see you pull this one off! Let's see the evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. The passport! Yeah! Take that! The victim had just returned from uh, abroad the day of her murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast! The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. Yeah! That's why the time you heard when it struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawat? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Ugh. Oh, Ew. we got him. He's foaming at the mouth. It's a little disturbing. Order! Order, I say! That was fun. Yeah, that was really cool. Well, 
This case has certainly turned out uh, differently than we all expected. Yep. Mr. Payne, your witness. Uh, he, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright. <clears throat> yes, Your Honor? I have to say I'm impressed. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And find the true culprit at the same time. Yay. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is uh, only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Potts, not guilty. Yay. I love the confetti. <laughs> Larry gets confetti. And not. And with that, yeah. this court is adjourned. Oof. Good job. It turns out that Frank Swat was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of their houses. That day. This is a true story now. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, the burglar let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching for her place, the victim returned. Fluster uh, flustered, Mr. Sewitt grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. Oh, disturbing. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Oof! I still can't believe we won! Right! Good job in there! Congratulations! <laughs> Thanks, Chief! I owe it all to you! Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over! Larry, you're supposed to be happy! What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good, wait, no! I mean, bad, 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 bad! Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed, man. Huh? But, but my Cindy Windy's gone, man. Gone forever. Aww. Larry, she was... Oh, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Harry? Uh, yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts, innocent. <laughs> um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this, ever. Let's celebrate dinner, movie, my treat. Why did you call him Harry? Oh, no, I couldn't. <laughs> I, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Hey there, take this. It's a present. A present from me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. R really? You? You made this, Larry? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick! Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you just want to cry? I wish she had your clock. Larry. Hmm. Are you so sure, Larry? Excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot about you in her own way. Nah, you, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right? Right. Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? Mm. Probably okay. the password again. Blackout record. Cindy's autopsy. Attorney's uh. badge. I'm gonna go with the... Here you go, Larry. Proof. Uh, <laughs> it's okay, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll forget about her soon enough. Look, I'm gonna head home. Thanks a ton, eh? Guess that wasn't the right thing to show him. Oops. I think it was supposed to be the clock. Right! 
I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right. Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work is done here. Shall we be off? Yeah, I, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me? We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him? Oh, uh, yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Wink. And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us, unless you count the clock he gave Mia. I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Oh, no. The Duh. end of case number one. Good job, team. Hey, this case is complete. A brand new episode has been added. Yay! Whoops. Uh, save your progress? Yes, we will. So anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. We had a lot of fun. We hope you did, too. Join us next time for case number two in Ace Attorney. And thanks again for Capcom for providing a copy. Check out the game now on the Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. Woohoo! God bless and happy gaming. See